Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jade and today I am doing my March wrap up for you guys. I actually did not know that I read as much in March as I did, but I completed eight books actually. Oh, I don't have one of them on me, but I completed eight books this month. Um, I had no idea that I did because there was like a week where I was on vacation and didn't read so in my mind it was just like the, it was so long since I'd last read but it's not true uh, if you guys watch my uh, January and February wrap up and TBR video I talked about in my TBR portion a bunch of books I wanted to read and I actually finished all of them except one and I did read a little bit more in that one so I'm really proud of myself because those are books I've been trying to read for a while and I just really wanted to get them done but let's get into it. We're gonna start with my audiobooks. The first audiobook I read this month is What Should Be Wild by Julia Fond. This book I would say is a three out of five stars. I just wasn't expecting it when I went into it. There was just a lot I wasn't expecting. Even though I hadn't read the synopsis or anything, I just wasn't prepared for what I read. This book is about a girl who can touch things and she'll either kill them or bring them to life. She is raised by her father who is a scientist and then like a um, kind of nanny and they're the only people that know she even exists really and knows anything about her power. And then one day um, a major event happens and she ends up meeting a guy who finds out about her power and then things just get worse and worse and someone special to her goes missing and she finds out about this sort of like power that her line of family has she's from like um a really like the rich people in town that have a bunch of secrets and mysteries and they've had a lot of disappearances of the women in their family over the years and you find out that a lot of it has to do with the woods surrounding their home. And it's just really strange. It's just, I wasn't expecting anything that was in the book. It was just a weird book. That being said, it was really good and it was written really well. I just didn't find it that exciting, if I'm going to be honest. It is still a good book. Anyways, the next book I read this month is Witchwood by Tahara Mafi. It is the second book in her, I don't know like if it's called like the Furthermore series, but it's the book after Furthermore. And it is about a girl who's 13 who is a Mortishore, which means she takes care of the dead in her town, which is Witchwood. And her job is actually really, really important but over the years, the townspeople have forgotten why her job is so important, and they've grown to resent and shun her. And she's a 13-year-old doing the job that isn't meant for someone that young or someone without help. And she's slowly been noticing some side effects of her job. It is a very dark and twisted book for a middle grade, but I absolutely loved it. All of Tahara Mafi's books, I just fall head over heels for. They're very, very good. I seriously love her books. Her world building in this novel is like nothing I've ever been, be like ever read before. We see some of her characters from her first book of Furthermore, which I really enjoyed because I really liked their characters. And there's just so much happening in this book. I love the way the story is told too. Like everything about it is perfect. It's a five out of five stars. I really can't wait for more books to come out in this sort of uh, series world thing and I honestly kind of want to reread it already which is kind of strange. The next audiobooks I listened to, these are the two that I read in one day. The first one I listened to was City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. This book is about a girl who has the ability to see ghosts after um, a near-death experience she had happened to her, and her parents happen to be ghost hunters, and they decide that they're going to start doing this TV show where they travel to the most haunted places in the world and talk about the history and the ghosts there and try to find if there's any ghosts. And she happens to be, of course, the only one that can actually see ghosts. 
So she goes to this new city and finds out a lot about what it means to see ghosts and has to deal with having them all around her. And it, I really liked it. I've heard some not good reviews of this book, but I actually really enjoyed it. I actually think it's like a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really loved the the like powers or like not really magic, but I just loved the setting of the book and the characters. I really enjoyed it. Um, I definitely need to read more Victoria Schwab's books. I think that might be the only book by her I've ever actually read, which is kind of messed up. So I'm going to have to like work on that more. But it was a really good read in my opinion. And then the next book I read that day was In an Absent Dream by... Jacques Maguire. This is the fourth book to the, um, like, Every Heart a Doorway series, and this book tells the story of one of the teachers at the academy, actually, the one, um, who is aging backwards that you see in the first book, and it tells her story of how she got kicked out of her own magical world and why she ended up aging backwards, and I loved this story the most out of all the wayward children series that's what it's called because I thought her story was the most interesting and it was the most like even though it's really fantastical it was very grounded in reality and I just really really enjoyed it I thought it was really good so after the audiobooks we finished a lot of our physical books that I've been meaning to read so I finished the duh. <laughs> so I finished The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson, and I absolutely loved this book. This is a 5 out of 5 stars. It's one of the most interesting books I've ever read because it is um, history mixed with um, nonfiction because what the author did is he took the events of the time, he recreated them, and he kind of like put put it in their first person perspective of the people so like obviously we don't have necessarily the first hand accounts but he just retold what it would be like for the people during the time using like letters and everything so it is kind of told from like two perspectives sort of but it's not necessarily a perspective thing uh the first sort of storyline going on in this book is the creation of the world's fair in chicago and it tells how Chicago ended up getting the World's Fair to be there and about all the architects. It's focused mostly on the architect and the head architect of the fair and all the struggles they went through to get it um, built and then to get enough people to come to it. And there was so many struggles for, for it. And honestly, I don't know how it even happened. It's really amazing to me after reading this book that we were ever able to accomplish the World's Fair. And then the second perspective is H.H. H. Holmes, the first serial killer ever known in America. He has a estimated number of around 200 murders, but we don't actually know how many people he successfully killed because he incinerated the bodies or used quicklime on them. But he built a hotel in which had like special rooms for gas chambers or just ways in which he could kill people and you not only the reason this book is so good is because H.H. H. Holmes is honestly a very brilliant man all of the things he was able to pull off is amazing it's not like he was just a murderer he would take out things on credit and he never ever had to pay back his creditors because he was so charismatic that they would come to collect and he'd talk them out of it. L literally there's this point in the book where all of his creditors find like they kind of like meet each other and they're like dude this guy's stealing from us we need to get it back and they were gonna get the police involved and he literally like convinces them not to. He's just very smart and he pulls off so many schemes and it's not he never spends money on anything. It's not like he isn't rich. He just doesn't spend money. He finds other ways to get things done. And it's really, really good. It takes a very dark twist during the end leading up to his um, imprisonment and execution. 
because uh, he does some messed up stuff, but I loved this book. And the reason these two things are written about is because he created a hotel called the World's Fair Hotel, and the reason he had so many victims is because of the World's Fair, so that's why they're connected. But it's one of the best books I've ever read. It was so good. The next book I finished this month is Wind Witch by Susan Denard. This is the second book to the Truth Witch series. Well, it's a Witchlands novel. Um, this book takes place after the events of the first book, so I can't go into it too much. I would say, I would say this probably is a four out of five stars, but I had such a hard time getting in the mood for this book. Like, when I read it, it just wasn't my mood, so I would probably, like, personally have a 3.5 out of five stars, but that being said, this book is so, so good. I just didn't get into it for some reason. Once I started reading, I'd be like, oh my god, this is so good, but then I like wouldn't want to pick it up afterwards. But the first book is about two girls. One of them is a truth witch, which means she knows when other people is lying, and the other one's a thread witch, which means she can see the threads that connect people together. And they both keep their powers a secret, especially our truth witch, because if people found out about her, she would be taken by different kingdoms so that they could find out like if anyone's lying she'd she'd be she'd be a very important commodity and then someone ends up finding out about her so it's about her trying to escape capture and then the second book kind of continues with that theme where just so much is going on and so many people are like trying to hunt down different people and there's really big political schemes happening and there's murders of like um important people for different realms and things as there's a bunch of different kingdoms in this book it's there's a very big overarching plot that's happening at the same time that all these kingdoms are fighting with each other there's a much bigger threat that no one realizes yet and it's just a really really good book i really enjoyed it even though i didn't read it at the best time the next book I read is for my anthropology, well, no, for my ethnic literature class. And this is Make Players to the Raven, A Koyakon View of the Northern Forest by Richard K. Nelson. I started this book last month for this class and we just finished up. I just had a big presentation on it, which I did really good on. And it's just a really, really interesting way of looking at life. Because the Koyakon are people that live in uh, Alaska, in the interior of Alaska, and they survive off the land. And because of that, they attribute a lot of importance to nature. And a lot of, there's a lot of superstition involved in their culture. So you just kind of learn about a whole different way of looking at the world and looking at nature. And I really, really liked it because of that. So if you, like, have an interest in learning about different cultures or, like, different views of the world, I would actually really recommend the book because I think it helped a lot. And then the only book I didn't finish this month that was on my, like, wrap-up of the last month is The Secret History of Witches by Louisa Morgan. I did read the second point of view because this book is a family saga of five witches and... I originally had read about one of the witches and this month I finished the second witch's life and it's just really interesting because it's not like they're like witches with big magical powers they really only can do really small things like you know one can like knows how to make potions except they she just knows how to combine herbs to make people um, feel better one knows how to um kind of like make soaps that make people feel certain feelings almost they don't really have very like powerful powers it's more surviving in a time where people who are outsiders are accused of being witches and being a witch is very dangerous so it's more exploring what it's like to be like always in danger of your life because of a religious belief and I really enjoyed it I need to continue with it it's more like a book where I want to sit down and I want to read a whole saga I don't want to just like read a little bit of a person's life I both times I've read it have just been in one go and I've read about their lives but I'm going to continue with it it might be something I'm reading for a while actually um I think I've decided that but I do like it maybe we'll finish the next book month I'm not sure 
The next book that I'm in the middle of is The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. It got real beat up because I brought it to Texas and my little cousins liked to look at it a lot. I am on page 205, so like we're a decent chunk in. There is like 700 pages, so you know, we only got 500 more. We'll see. Maybe we could like get this done in the weekend or something. But this is the third book to the Mistborn Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson, which is about a world that is under the rule of this Lord Ruler who's really oppressive. And the whole world is really, really depressing and weird um, because it's like too close to the sun, I would say. So there's things die, like things shrivel up and die and there's... Um, volcanic ash being released always to cool down the planet. It's just a really interesting setting and it also has a really really cool magical abilities involving ingesting metals. And it's about a group of people who decide to band together to defeat the Lord Ruler. And the third book goes off of the other ones in continuation with this epic saga of like trying to stop the world from ending. And I literally think the world's going to end. And I think that's why it's such a good book. So I, I haven't even read it. I already know it's going to be a 5 out of 5, even though I haven't finished yet. It's just, it's something you know. And the other book I don't have with me, but I'm going to finish it today. Um, but it's technically April 1st when I'm filming this, so it'll be in my next one. And that's Potinki. It's another book I am reading for uh, my World Indigenous Studies class. So... I have a lot of books coming up next month that I have to read for my classes anyways, but I also need to pick out stuff for my TBR, which is kind of exciting. Ooh, I love getting to pick up new books. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave me a like down below. I love you all so, so very much, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye-bye!